This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. There is, um, there is a very interesting um, Talmud Gemara that is uh, describing the way that the soul is coming down to, to the world and the Gemara, the Talmud, is describing the soul as um, um, like a large piece of, of wool, semel, that people are taking it out from a field of thorns. And the nature of the wool is that it holds stuck itself to the to the thorns and pieces from the wool are being stuck on the thorns and like through the thorns you cannot take all the all the wool all that piece together you cannot it's like it will parts will will be torn out from from the wool before it will be out so when the Creator is calling the name of the soul to come down to the world, so the soul realizing that that's what that is about to happen to her, and like she's struggling, the pieces of her are being torn from her. Like she's, she's so not willing to go down to the world, to this world that we are living in, that the soul she's ready to like she's struggling she's she's she doesn't she's not able to refuse because it's a decree hashem called her name but she don't she doesn't want it at all to happen now on our souls It's been said that we are godly souls and everyone can know that thing about themselves when they're looking deep inside and they recognize their place. It's written that a person is obligated to know its place. You should know who you are. And now people usually interpret that commandment of knowing yourself in a negative way. They're thinking to themselves, I'm capable of sinning, so I must watch out, I must be careful, I'm a lazy person, so I need to put the alarm, I know that it takes me this and that time to do like my thing, so I need to wake up earlier. People are taking it in a negative way, that you need to know who you are, you should know your place. People usually are interpreting that in a negative way. And that mistake is a horrible mistake because that mistake is saying, actually showing, proofing that the person He's not even aware to who he really is because he's judging himself on his lackings and his lackings are not who he really is. His lackings are coming out of the fact that he, the soul, is blocked and trapped inside of physicality, inside of a physical body. A soul, when Hashem is calling that soul, so it's flying and immediately she'll be there. And if Hashem will command that soul to go to the right, to go to the left, that soul will fly, will do its order with no doubts. Maybe we'll be scared of doing it. Maybe we'll be worried while doing it. Like many things that soul can go through in mind. But in reality, the soul is not limited. It's a spiritual part that doesn't have no space, that doesn't have no, no limits, it's not 
constricted to physical limitations. Now, our laziness and our sadness and our difficulties and all the challenges that we're going through are growing because of the fact that we're stuck in body. The body feels tired, the body feels the hunger, like all the, the, the nerves, the stress, the pressure, the sweat, the sorrow, the pain, all those things are, are ways that the body reacts to, to things that we're going through, to our life experiences, but not the soul. So when a person is judging himself based on the results of his body, means the way that his body function, that he's waking up late, that he's not eating well, that he's whatever, always falling, no, not stable, so then he miss understanding who he really is. He doesn't get it. And when the commandment is telling us, you must know your place, you don't recognize your place at all in that moment. Because you think that you are your vehicle, you think that you are your body. And that's why when you're checking your place, you're judging yourself in a negative way to say, okay, I'm lazy, okay, I'm heavy, okay, I'm tired, okay, I'm this, I'm that. But in reality, you never met yourself at all. Because who you really are is your soul. And when Hashem told us you should know your place, means that you should know your place in heaven. Means that you should know where your soul been carved from. Who you are, not which body you received. Not into which prison the Creator sent you to a mission, to which exile, in, in, into which ex body the Creator exiled your soul. That's not the question. That's your problem, that's your mission, to escape, to run away from physicality, to attach your mind to the, to, to the ancient knowledge that is coming from the ancient, holy, and, 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 and long days of before creation. But when a person really needs to know its place, the main thing that a person should know is who he really is. And who that we really are is something magnificent, is something so beautiful, so, 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 so divine and inspiring that if the person will have that understanding he will go and be happy all his days because why a person is worried why a person is sad because he's afraid to lose money he's afraid not to have enough he's afraid to be late that someone will scream at him he's afraid from things that belongs to a temporary world He's afraid to have a fight, that he will have to feel certain emotions, things that are taking place in time, things that are taking place in place, in a certain place of your body, of your feelings, of, your, of, of, of a certain location. You're afraid from those situations to confront with the figure, with the face of your father, of your mother, of your brother, of your friend, of whatever, your wife, your whoever it's going to be. You're afraid of temporary situations that belong to a temporary world and you're scared from that because you give the power and the strength to those temporary situations that are based on fake imagination, not realistic situations at all. Because they belong to a world of light. They belong to the curtains that are blocking the real light of the Creator. And you're afraid from the curtains. You're afraid from the masks, from the costumes, from the figures that the Creator is dressing, instead of realizing that there is someone behind that wall. There is someone that is part of you, that is waiting for your reunion, for you to come back together. Like the, the verse is saying, that Hashem is calling us, Baruch Maskir Nishkachot, Borolam Taskirli. Hashem is telling us, Ami Ata, you are my nation. I don't remember the. the, the, the 
No, Ami Ata. He's, he's saying to us, Ami Ata, you are my nation. I don't remember the complete verse. And the, the, the wise people, the Chachamim, they explain that verse. Don't say, Ami Ata, you are my nation. Just you should say, Imi Ata, you are with me, Bimchitzati, on my side, Hashem is saying. Hashem is not calling us, Ami, and the Chachamim, the wise people, they're saying, Al tikra Ami, don't say my nation, don't say you are my people, like he is our king over there somewhere else, and we are his people, that's also a praise, wow, we are your people, really, we are your people, amazing, no, don't say that, that's not the truth, that's not enough, that's not the complete truth. The real truth is that Hashem is saying, me. Don't read it as you are my nation. Imi. Read it like that I'm telling you, you are with me. You are with me on the same side. Bimchitzati. What it means bimchitzati? A michitza, it's a separate, it's a wall that is separating the room to two sides. You put a michitza in the synagogue, in the Bet Knesset. For the men's section and women's section. Between those two sections you put a mechitza. Mechitza it's a wall. It's a separation. So Hashem is saying, listen, my people, you're not my people. You're on my side. You are also behind the wall. You're also behind the curtains. You are not on the other side of the curtains. You're not from the dark side, you're not from the side of the enemies, you're not from the side of, of creatures of darkness. You are with me. Now when you look at yourself, and you look at your physicality on your body, you are falling into that trap of the evil inclination to make you believe that you're part of the temporary world. That you're trapped in a physical body, because that's what you see. <laughs> what do you want? Like... Is that Rabbi crazy? Like, what is he talking about? Look, that's me. If you pinch me, I scream. Ow, oh, it's, it's hurt. it hurts. Like, that's me. Don't touch my finger. Like, that's me. Those are my fingers. And you don't realize that you just said, don't touch my fingers. It's not you. It's yours. But it's only yours. It's your body. It's not you. That's not you. That's yours. That's your finger. That's your hair, those your eyes, that's your body. It's not who you are. Who you are is the godly soul that is hidden inside. You are that godly soul that from inside remembers and holds that ancient memory that is coming from the ancient archive of Kedem, of the earliest days, that you and him are one. You and him and the Torah are one thing, is one thing. Only one, because there is only one. And all the rest is behind the curtains. All the rest is how that it seems to be from the other side. But you need to work hard not to see things from the other side, from the dark side. You don't need to look at things from outside, you need to look at things from inside. Now you have inside of you Two ways of looking at things. You can look at things with your eyes and you can look at things with your mind. You can look at things with, through your ears, things that are coming from outside, and you can look at things with your feelings. You can hear your emotions. You can sense, you can feel. And with the inner tools, you can interpret the life, the life experience in the right way. And with the external tools, with the outside tools, you cannot interpret the world in the right way and it won't bring you to the answer to the truth. You'll mistake. Your eyes will mislead you and your ears the same and the nose and the taste, the mouth, the hands, everything. You won't be able to recognize the real truth if you will count on your eyes. And there are many verses that are showing to us and many stories that we read and heard on righteous people that failed because they walked after their eyes, that they were counting on their eyes. And they were counting on rumors. And they were counting on things that people came and told them and said and they didn't 
look inside they haven't meditated enough to find the real answer from within what the real truth is and that's why they failed because they were counting on the external outside world and in the outside world there is a there is a way to grab for the outsiders the demons and the husks and the coverings and all the dark forces are grabbing the world from outside like leeches. They're leeching themselves, holding themselves and, 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 and pooling energy from outside to the outside. But you are an individual creation. Every person is an individual creation that is connected to infinity, to eternity from within. And we must work day and night on that self-awareness, on that deep, deep, deep understanding of who we really are. And that's mechat chila, to know yourself first, that's the first step. That what that is mean, that you have knowledge, that, that you know. That's mechat chila, you should know yourself first. First letters of those three words, Complete the word da'at, knowledge. Da'a tchila. Taf. Dalet ein taf. When you, first of all, know yourself, your true self, not how dangerous your body is, know how weak your body is, who you are in the light of your soul, in the essence of your being, in the nature of your creation. You know the roots of, 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 of your soul, where it been carved out from in the throne of honor under the throne of honor a soul that is coming from a place that only godliness exists there no coverings over there no bodies no figures no colors no shades only infinite light eternal light light that is also beyond physical light Light that cannot be grabbed in our eyes. Oraganuz da tzadikim. The hidden light that is saved and, and treasured for the righteous ones, for the future to come. From that place your soul came to this physical body. And why the soul is screaming and kicking and doing the best that she can not to come down to this world. Because the soul is aware to the accident that is about to come, that she won't be able to predict the consequences, the results of that accident, of coming down to this world. Because in this world there is something that it's the worst thing of them all, that is called shichecha. Forgetfulness? I'm just making up. Yes, that's the word? Okay, I just made it up. And it worked. <laughs> and what that happens to that world, to that soul, when it's coming down to this world, is that it's forgetting who she is, who it is. And when you forget who you are, you don't have a way back. That's the curse that when Moses heard that decree that is about to happen, he fell on his face. What happened? Hashem said to Moses, in that day, Aster Astir Panai, I'm going to hide the fact that I'm hiding my face from you. He didn't say, I'm only going to hide my face. If someone is hiding and you can't see him, but you remember that he's hiding, so you at least can call him. But if you forgot the fact that he's hiding, or you're not aware to the fact that he's hiding, you, you, he's not exist for you. So when we forget who we are, we're not looking for that answer anymore. Who are you? Like, it's me. Hi. Six feet tall. That's where I live. Doctor so and so. I'm a lawyer. Nice to meet you. I have so, such amounts of money in my bank. Like, you in the world of life. You are part of that system that makes believe that eternity does not exist. You become to be, when you don't remember who you are, you become to be part of the illusion. You become to be part of the lie 
that is denying the real truth existence of the Creator that can be revealed to this world only through your soul, through your godly soul. When you remember who you are and you express your godliness, you express the real nature of your soul. Now how you do that? For that you need to be truthful. Because everyone got a different soul. And the way to express the godliness of your soul is by being truthful. Is by not cooperating with the fake illusion lie of this world. Alma de Shika, the world of lie. And you must go all the way against your fears and all the way against your anger and to break all your bad attributes to be a perfect human being, the nicest and kindest and, 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 and most patient and loving and understanding and sensitive and caring. And if you don't work on that, the soul is blocked and trapped. And that's the reason why it was suffering. Because it knew back then that it won't be alive, that it will be trapped, that it won't be able to express itself. That is why the soul was so scared. So we must remind our soul that it's allowed to talk that she can talk, that she must speak, that she have to express itself. And we are its mouth. We must talk. We must talk. We must express our mind. We must express our feelings. And if we're not doing that, we're sinning in the worst sin of them all. Because we're cooperating with the dark side of this world. We are letting those outsiders to control our holy and godly souls by controlling us through our fears and our sadness and our depression and all of our negative thoughts. And we must go and battle and fight against that way and to create a movement of positive energy that is fighting with everyone. Without thinking, oh, he's Jewish, he's not Jewish, he's Orthodox, he's not Orthodox, he's Haredi, he's not Haredi, he's a rabbi, he's not a... Not thinking, if that person is lying, if that person is cruel, he's your enemy now. Enemy means that you need to fight with him, that his lie won't shut off holy and pure souls. He's your enemy. He is your enemy because he creates victims. No matter who he is and what's the size and length of his beard. You don't look at physicality. You don't judge people by their look even if they look like Admorim. Like huge rabbis. You don't look at that. Oh, but you don't know who he is. I couldn't care less who he is. I'm not thinking about who he is. I'm just looking on the people that are under his authority. If they are happy and if they are blooming and growing and succeeding, so I'm with them. I'm supporting his activities on this earth. And I don't care. I wish for him to succeed and I'm blessing him and I'll do as much as I can to assist him in his factory, in his work because he's amazing. He makes people grow. But if he is depressing people and putting them under arrest, he's putting them under his power and his control, and he's ruling them like a cruel leader, even while acting polite and even while drugging them and explaining to them that that's the right way and that's the path of our ancestors and calling it in I don't care in which name he will call it. As long as he terrifies those souls and put them under that method of fear and pressure, he's my enemy, he's our enemy, and we must fight him all the way. Fight his method, fight his way of behaving. The main way, first of all, is to fix ourselves. It's not to go and start shooting people. We're not taking the rule in our hands and going fighting people. We are screaming to Hashem and we're calling Hashem. And we're talking to the hearts of people that they themselves will get stronger. That they will go and fight the war of good. That the power of good will conquer and defeat darkness. 
that there will be no more darkness in the world, no control to the forces of darkness. The people that remember who they are and that they have that sense of the true nature of their creation, they feel the pulse and the energy, the good and positive quality, good nature and, and, and vibe of their souls, that they will go all the way to fight their own wars. You don't need to go and fight for everyone and to kill yourself on the way. You go and you take responsibility on yourself first of all. Never to depress no one, never to hurt no one, never, never to control no one, never to break no one's spirit, never to humiliate and to shame no one. And if you recognize in yourself that you're failing on it, you must go and do tshuva. You must come back to Hashem from that bad behavior, from those horrible manners, from those negative attributes, the fear and the stress and the pressure that is controlling you and bringing you to hurt other people, to depress other souls. And first of all, your enemy is your own evil inclination. And you must fight with your evil inclination to fix yourself and to become a better person, a loving and kind and supporting and warm and understanding and accepting and respecting person. And if you're not that one, you're not able to go and preach and teach other people. You must first of all, shot at tzmecha You must connect yourself to the truth first. You should know yourself, remind yourself of your good nature, and find your soul, and let it be expressed. And then when you see that good things are coming out of you, that people around you are coming closer, people are smiling more around you, people feel more comfortable with you. So then you can find opportunities to help them even more, to give them a hand, to give them a shoulder, to support them, to give them an advice, an advice that grew up, that developed through your life experience fighting in your inner battles, coming to the right conclusions, understanding in depth what is the true potential of your soul and what is your true nature and who you really are. And then you can go and shine that light on others to help them to find themselves, not to follow you. Not to follow you, even if you're in a shiny and illuminating place, in the greatest place ever. They have their own place. Their dark place supposed to shine from the light of Hashem. Even if they are now in darkness, you don't need to take them out of the darkness. You need to deliver the access to the light. They need to turn on the light in their places. That all darkness will illuminate like the day. That all darkness will disappear from the world. You cannot host one billion people in your house, even if you live in a palace, in a castle. Even if you own the whole land and it's all yours. You cannot bring all the immigrants from all the world to your country. You cannot. You cannot. That's not the right way. The right way is to give wisdom, to water the fields, to purify the sources of water, that the wide world will bloom and rise and, and, and get nicer and much more beautiful. That everything will grow in all the lands, in all the towns, in all the cities, in all the countries, in all the houses, to all the families, from all the nations with no connection to their families or communities or their nation, their color, their accent, their languages, their locations. That's all nonsense. That understanding that there are people that are more important, that are greater, that are better, is coming only as a result of a lie of a lie of people that didn't have a complete confidence in Hashem, didn't have a complete understanding of the divine will of the Almighty, that wanted to reveal His endless love, His loving kindness on the wide world. 
with no constrictions and with no limitations at all, at all, at all. He just wanted to share his heart. But we went into that world of lie and we lost touch, we lost our Wi-Fi, we lost our connection. And through that pressure and stress that we start feeling, we start separating ourselves and cutting ourselves, to blocking ourselves and dividing ourselves to families, to tribes, to nations. In the beginning it was all amazing. The real divine will of Hashem is that people will walk happy and naked in heaven with no fear and no pressure. That all the animals will be free, that everyone will be friends together. Now, because that we've been hurt, because that exile took place, because that the world became even darker and worse than, than we could have expected it to be, now we must defend ourselves. So people are defending and protecting themselves and their beloved ones in many, many ways. But it doesn't mean that that is the real will of Hashem, the real will of the Creator. Now, it doesn't mean that we need to go naked in the streets. It means that we need to understand that we need to work on removing our blockings. Not to react and to act corresponding to our patterns that are based on traumas from our childhood or earlier years. Not to attack everyone that is talking out loud. Not to hate every person that looks like someone that you're afraid of. Not to judge people before that you recognize the real intention of those people. And if you are in that place, so work on yourself to have a little bit more patience. To work on your attributes, to expand your abilities, that you'll be able to understand more, to feel more, to sense more. How many people we're erasing in a moment, like just destroying them, disqualifying them. No that, no he, no they, they killed thousands of people, destroyed people from enjoying the treasure that the Creator planted inside of you. If you're talented, if you're amazing, if you're a speaker, if you're a player, if you're an actor, if you're a wise, intelligent person, you're talented in something. Why to block it from the world? Why not to share that light to the world? To billions of people that are thirsty. Billion of people that are willing to learn and to accept. I'm opening my mouth and I'm speaking live on Facebook, on social media, and people that I never heard of are following my classes and walking half-lives with me. Walking days and night with me, listening to my classes and hearing my words, and they are not Jewish, and they never been to Israel, and for sure they're not for my family, and like, who are you? Never met you. Yes. But he met me. He feels connection to me. I don't know him. I'm from the other side of the camera. I cannot see him. But he sees me. I've been to Canada a couple of years ago. I gave a class. Before the class, a person came to me and he started crying. I told him what's going on. Like I, I hugged him. He told me, I walked all the way with you. I left the yeshiva with you. With, I was learning in the yeshiva with you. I left the yeshiva with you. I went and I opened the center with you in Jerusalem. He walked with me. I didn't know it. And that holy person was daily looking and opening and watching my words, my speeches, and he heard my life experience and how painful that experience was for me and how we were suffering and how much pain and sorrow. Like, he lived my life with me. He was crying with me when I was crying and I didn't know him at all. I could go walk in the street, ignore him completely, didn't rec don't, can't recognize him. What I couldn't recognize, I couldn't recognize his soul. For me, I don't know him. He was nobody for me. But only because I was counting on my eyes. Only because I was looking and that face was not familiar. 
I couldn't recognize that portrait, that face. Never saw him in my life, no. I was connected to my physical eyes. If I would listen to the voice of my soul, I would understand that in front of me is standing my soulmate, my beloved brother, someone that loves me like I care about myself, he care about me even more. He's coming to my teachings, he's walking with me, he's crying for me, he's praying for me, he loves me. If I would let my spiritual eye, my inner senses speak to me and I listen to them, I'm going to feel like that to every one of the souls that are surrounding me. And if you will listen to it, you will love and you will accept and you will respect and you will enjoy from all the souls that are surrounding you. Because souls, they don't know the meaning of the word hate and jealousy and anger. Your soul never anger. Your soul never scared. Your soul is a positive thing. It's the light of Hashem. It's the light of the Creator. Your soul is the good. Your soul is the kindness. Your soul is generosity. Your soul is all the beautiful qualities that exist in the world. That's the nature of God. That's godliness. It's goodness. Your soul is good. And good is who you are. And when you will be attached to who you are, you'll be able to recognize that good in the face of those ones that are surrounding you. And suddenly your clients will be angels and people that are stuck with you in traffic, all going to be your friends. And it's going to be a party. It's just going to be the time of redemption. Because everyone will shine to each other and smile to each other and going to accept each other. As a result of their inner effort to recognize their own good. I hope you got it because I cannot explain it better. Okay? So have a great night and Hashem will bless us all. Um, do I have another class before of Rosh Hashanah? Probably I'm going to talk again. But again, I'm going to bless you. Shana Tova. Blessed year. An amazing, amazing beginning to this coming up year. Year of redemption. Year of salvation. Year of all good things to start. Amen. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.